What's up, y'all? Shabo Lianum to Mkulu, South African Geek. Welcome to my channel. About to dive right into the main trailer for Wheels of Time. I reacted to the teaser and people were kind enough to give me information about the show. Like the, um, what is it called? The One Power, um, the True Power, the Dark One, uh, where, which group of people train their power from. I think the True Power was corrupted by the dark one and the male species if i remember correctly i tried not to get into the story beats of the story because i still want to enjoy the story as a newbie i also got the trailer breakdown from ign from the showrunner which it should be interesting anyway i'm mad excited to see this this is the official main trailer swear your oath marine sedai I swear to speak no word that is not true. To make no weapon with which one person may kill another. She forges weapons? The one power is a weapon. The one power. Do you know what Aes Sedai means in the old tongue? Servants of all. Damn. The production design for the show, though. I didn't choose this path, but I will follow it. Destiny. The old blood runs deep in those mountains. Let's hope it's prepared them for what's coming. I have no idea any of the characters. <laughs> Who they are. What they roll in the story is. The Dark One. There's prophecies. One of five people. Your life isn't going to be what you thought. Army is coming. Damn. Ooh. How much money did they put into the show? No matter the cost. A lot. Our enemies are everywhere. They will leave no one standing. This is how you make a fantasy series. Big ups, Amazon. Ooh. If we do not stop the dark one now, the whole world will burn. I can't allow it. Ooh. Yo, is the professor for money heist playing the dark one? <laughs> Am I tripping? November 19th. Show up November 19th to see me react to the show. It's top priority now. No. Ooh. Goddamn. That looked amazing. I, I just I just want to dive into the the whole showrunner breakdown. So sorry if I'm not saying a lot, but let's dive right in. Swear your oath. Marine Sedai. Hey everyone, I am Rafe Judkins, showrunner of The Wheel of Time. Ray. And I'm breaking down the trailer for you. Please break it down. It is the Professor for Money Heist. <laughs> the wheel weaves as the wheel wills. So this is Moraine uh, with her hand on Moraine. the throat. The idea is that the women of the Aes Sedai swear that they will never lie, that they won't make weapons with the One Power, and that they won't use the One Power as a weapon. Um, so she's so not a, a, a weapon forger. Of their life. It's oh, she, she is. May not be expecting to see in the first season, but uh, I think that they will like how we're using it and and. Here we are getting our first glimpse in the trailer of Moraine using the One Power, uh, which is a very important thing in the books. One thing we'll find out in the show as it continues on is that when men do use the One Power, the consequences are huge. So here we can see Moraine and Leandrin standing up against... Don't they use the true power? 
Um, and Loghain is a really important character in the books um, that we wanted to bring up earlier in the show um, and more fully in this first season than he was. In so the he's first not the book. dark one, it's Loghain. He's the first man we really meet using the one power. And so to see him play a bigger role on the TV show lets us show what it means for a man to use the one power instead of you just having okay interesting a description of what it means in the books or a story about it in the books we can actually show it on the screen and you can understand the consequences of it servants of all it is they who serve the world so here we are looking at the Aes Sedai in the hall of the tower Aes Sedai the Aes Sedai are this group is that the concept art or the extra shot from the show into different Ajas um, and each of these seven Ajas has a focus um, the yellows are healers the browns are interested in knowledge the greens are the damn the mythology so of the show each of them has kind of separated out the way that they interact with the world in into these different groups and and they have colors associated with them and these women uh they love a color scheme so they wear the they wear the colors that they they are part of that aja as well yeah so here you can see the iconic jewel that moiraine has and wears on her head and we we thought it was iconic really jewel to see it at some point during the show so when she goes i have no idea uh, about all of this has these very uh heighten moments in in the show that are are very formal then we'll see her wearing her her classic head jewel i didn't choose this path but i will follow it the showrunner seemed like a fan of the series so the old blood runs deep in those mountains Yes, looks here, like it's in good hands. We can see this incredible mountainscape with these women walking through it. And I can confirm that every single thing in this frame was shot in camera. There's no VFX here. So it Damn, was really practical. as much as possible to try to put our actors in these incredible places. To put, so they built the sets, um, went to locations. As as we could of the monsters in front of them to try to get as much of the show in camera. Even the monsters were prosthetic, I saw from the trailer real because fantasy i think you know when you drop out of it it's because you feel like it's not real and so trying to at least give that to our actors so that they could really feel like they're in a real world was hugely important to us but there will be one who can stand against him and it's one of the five of you one of the five of yeah, you. So this is um, Nynaeve, uh, who's one of the most important characters in the books and beloved by fans around the world. And she has this iconic trait in the books where she tugs on her braid. And it happens... Anyone I'm sure the fans are lost it when they saw the tug of the, of the braids. But it was really important to me to get into that show, this iconic moment of, of actually tugging that braid. And so... This is just after she's done something pretty incredible in the show, um, and it's it's a tug not only. Thank God he's not spoiling story, anything. Defiance. So we did try to get a braid tug in there for all the fans of the books to um, to to see that we we did right by our naive. Right. What are those? His army is coming. This is a great shot of, of one of our Trollocs, and it was one of the moments that we really wanted to carve out in the show. And it looks like a mix of practical effects and CG, like busting into the door looked like CG, um, then turned to practical. You know, it was really important to me that they be a mix of practical and, and visual effects. So Called it. Never your brain can't look at this and actually know exactly what is real and exactly what is created in the computer and the more that we're doing that i think the more successful we are at creating something that just makes you look at it and go shit that's scary instead of oh that's a cool vfx um you know we really wanted something that had as many real elements as possible to it and this shot for instance does like there was a man there on the day in a suit like roaring with a weapon in his hand but that looks like a vfx shot some really beautiful visual effects work that's been done onto it to make it take it and make it something that you could never create in real life
what we're seeing right here, this is actually the city of Faldara, and in the distance, Faldara. Now, you can see Tarwin's Gap. Um, and just like everything else in the show, I wish I knew what these things were. A combination of the practical locations, practical effects, and uh, and expanding it with the VFX world. So what you see in front of you is par partially shot in uh, the Canary Islands um, in a beautiful volcanic plain, partially shot at uh, an incredible brick structure um, in the Czech Republic. God damn, um, so many locations. The, the base of the city itself, and then partially augmented in, in the VFX world with um, the work of our production design team and, and the VFX team, so that hopefully, when it all melts together, um, it doesn't just look like a big computer-generated image. You can see the pieces in it that are that are real, and those little tiny bodies are are real extras in a cold Czech winter, walking across that bridge. Our enemies are everywhere. They will leave no one standing. What's up here now is uh, a shot of land, probably more emotional than anyone who's read the books would ever expect to see him. Um, and I think that one thing that we've worked really hard to do in the show is to show... As a fan of the book series, if you're watching this, tell me if you like the choices the showrunner made that go against the books. That is incredibly complicated and I think is one thing that totally sets this show apart from, from anything else that's on TV right now because this relationship is so interesting between this man and woman. Um, and, and they can actually feel what the other one feels. So they to, connect to it? To show that um, on the show, we didn't want characters just talking about it. We wanted to bring emotion to the forefront for yeah them. show so, don't tell i can't say what it one is, of the biggest elicit this film rules from the characters and see that they feel each other's pain not just physical but also the emotions that the other one is feeling and and give give light to this really unique um male female relationship that's that's not usually sexual that you never get to see on a show of of such um such balance between uh, men and women as as you get between Moiraine and Lan and between the other Aes Sedai and their warders. You've lost too many people already. I can't lose you. Yeah, so here in this shot we see is some very intimidating white cloaks circling uh, two of our actors, and then there's just an extra we forgot to paint out in the corner of the screen just just to sleep. No, this is uh, this is a character that I think we've already announced online uh, named Aram, um, who's Aram. one of the tinkers uh, or the traveling people as they'd like to call themselves, and they he has the bright colored cloak um, that you would normally see with them with lots of pinks and purples in it and i will leave a mystery though why he is in uh in the sad little position that he's in in this shot if we do not stop the dark one now the whole world will burn the yes, whole world sure. would burn um a way gate which is a way gate really important in the books as a means of of travel between places that are very distant from each other so they got a boom tube from young justice uh, in this, this <laughs> channel is created um that sort of moves between our world and if you can open up these way gates you can travel uh across huge distances in a short amount of time um, but there's also incredible danger if you do use the ways to travel so it's um, a balance that the characters are constantly deciding whether they want to strike or not and almost no one ever uses the ways so in this scene when Moiraine decides to take our characters through the ways it is only because uh, it's probably going to be visually stunning they as they travel through it gate, what meets them on the other side is uh Pretty, pretty terrifying. Yeah, so in these Are they dropping the whole season in one day or like Moraine, 
weekly. And Mogain, all using the one power. Um, and the great thing about it in the books is that it does have so many complex uses. So we have so much room to go with this one power, even beyond season one. Um, we're just scratching the surface of what you can really do with it here. Um, and one of the core things that you do see is that when Loghain is using the one they power, keep showing the same um, shots. They're not trying to spoil anything. Black, oily, slick that you see coming over it and that is something called the corruption and uh, two minutes left that that black corruption is is something that drives male channelers mad um, i read i saw really, this i actually really saw this important thing in my breakdowns that i saw we had to figure out a way to show it visually so we use this oily black slick because of the dark one the male channelers power to show what it means when a man's power is more corrupt So I think that this Damn. shot in the trailer is probably one that will generate some of the most online conversation about what it's representing. Um, and I don't want to stifle that conversation by just telling people what it is. Um, it so looks cool. I will say that we try very hard in the show to use something that Robert Jordan used in the books, which was these um, prologues are out of POV chapters that, that just show us something totally different than what we expected. And sometimes those are flashbacks and sometimes those are flash forwards. Sometimes those are damn. So it's going to have different time and we jumps to use that the same way on the show. So I can't say whether this is a, a flashback or a flash forward or a lateral flash of something that we are seeing happen for a character that we won't get to really know for seasons to come. Um, but I do think that this scene is one of my favorites in season one. Um, and I hope that the fans of the books will be excited when they finally realize what it's representing. So that is it from me on the trailer. Uh, I am sure that there's lots more questions everyone has, but uh, hopefully this is giving you. That was interesting. I'm not going to listen to his whole farewell. I got to edit other stuff. But that was interesting. And, and now I know a little bit more about the show. But not, nothing to do with the plot. A few character names. A few character braid moments. Interesting. Stoked that they did a lot of these stuff's practical. With a mix of CG. That would enhance the show. The viewing experience for both me and newbie and people who are fans of the book. Anyway, deuces.